Let's also compare the radiation patterns of the short dipole versus the half-wave dipole. To plot the radiation patterns, we normalize the power density, S, of each antenna to get F, which is shown here. Plotting these two functions, we can see that the azimuthal patterns are identical. And this makes sense because both antennas are identical and symmetrical in the azimuthal direction. But look at the elevation patterns. The half-wave dipole is just, just a tiny bit narrower. How much narrower? Well, we can define what is called the half-power beam width. The half-power beam width is the angular width between points in the radiation pattern where the magnitude of f reaches half its peak value. So here the peak of f is, has a value of 1. And so we're looking at where f reaches a value of um, point f point 0.5. So, and then also right here. So for the short dipole on the left, if we solve for the value of theta, where f is equal to 0.5, we get 45 degrees and we get 135 degrees. And subtracting these two, we can calculate the half uh, power beam width is 90 degrees, which here you can see that labeled, 90 degrees. Doing the same for the half wave dipole on the right side, we can calculate a half power beam width of 78 degrees, only a bit smaller than the short dipole. But this half power beam width only describes the angular width of the main lobe of the antenna radiation pattern. In other words, it only provides a two-dimensional description of the radiation pattern. But antennas radiate in three dimensions. So it would be nice to have a parameter we could use to describe the main lobe of the antenna in 3D. Well, such a parameter does exist, and it's called the beam pattern solid angle. The beam pattern solid angle describes the size of the main lobe of the antenna in 3D. It is calculated using omega p, and we integrate around the surface of a sphere. So I'm going to write f function of theta and phi, d omega, and the uh, units here are stair radians, sr. So d omega is sine theta d theta d phi. To understand stair radians and omega, let's consider an analogy. Here's the analogy. What is the circumference of a circle? The circumference is 2 pi r. And how many radians do we need to subtend to go around the, circ the complete circle? We'd have to go 2 pi radians. In other words, the circumference of a circle in units of radians is 2 pi. This number is independent of r, the radius of the circle independent of r. Now for stair radians. What is the surface area of a sphere? The surface area is pi 4 pi r squared, units of meters squared. In units of solid angle, the area, that's omega, the area of a sphere is 4 pi stair radians. This number is independent, again, of r, the radius of the sphere. For an isotropic antenna that radiates the same power in all directions equally, we have f is equal to 1. And then the corresponding beam pattern solid angle will be have a maximum value, integrate f over 4 pi. Now you can see, hopefully, that when we integrate over 4 pi for d omega, that's in units of stair radians, and that means integrating over the whole surface of the sphere, the solid angles. So we integrate 1, and we'll get a value of 4 pi stair radians. So an isotropic, um, an isotropic antenna radiates over 4 pi, or 12.57 stair radians. Meanwhile, the beam pattern solid angle for a short dipole 
if we were to calculate this, it would be 8.4 stair radians, so a bit better than this 12.57 stair radians for an isotropic antenna. And for a half power, half wave dipole, uh, the beam pattern solid angle would be about 7.7 .7 stair radians. So not a whole lot better, which we also saw for the half power beam width. The short dipole and the half wave dipole are not really all that different in terms of the radiation patterns. In the practice problem for this lecture, we'll practice calculating the beam pattern solid angle for an antenna. Now consider the radiation pattern for the short dipole and the half wave dipole. Let's ask another question relating to our design challenge. If we want to heat up cancer cells inside the colon, is the current design that we've come up with so far, a half wave uh, hybrid helix dipole, is that a good candidate for us to use? Or should we consider further modifications to this antenna?